Well, Dean Christian, you've had 24 hours just about now to take it all in. What are your thoughts 24 hours later on what was a, a historic day for the club? Um, it's been a very quick 24 hours, if I'm honest. Um, obviously, we celebrated, um, you know, till late into the night and amazing to see three or four hundred Villa fans outside the hotel just having a sing song. So, uh, yeah, I love that. I being, think that being conducted by Jack, Jack Grealish and John McGinn, it's yeah. terrific. And Christian, you've had many memorable days in football throughout your career. Where does yesterday rank? Oh, without doubt, the most memorable. It's a, it's a really unique occasion to be able to have the sense of winning a cup final, but also get that uh, sense of you know a full season um, reward in term in terms of a league. So it's a quite unique experience. I never dreamt I'd ever be part of it, and I often watched and imagined what would it be like. Um, so yeah, it's not good for not good for the health because uh, you know it's so it's just such a dramatic you know winner takes all outcome. But I, I loved it. Has it sunk in yet, Dean? Um, not yet, I think it will over time. I think there's that many things that we're still planning that I don't think we've, got, we've had the time to let it all sink in yet. But I think it'll start sinking in tonight. We're, kind of, <laughs> we're working tonight. We're, we we're, are. We're, um, and I think that will, it's when you start talking about the next steps that, that it really will become, become very real. We've been dealing in so many hypotheticals now for some time. You, know, you have to have plans for either scenario. Now it's a reality. I think that will pretty quickly uh, it's incredibly exciting, by the way, to be in that situation, but it's a moment where you have to pause and really let sink in the reality. And, and, and I think you make better decisions. We've talked about this a lot. We share this view that you're being incredibly decisive and theatrical and dramatic in decision making is a bit overrated. The best decisions are ones where you take your time and get as much input as you can and make the decision when you have to. And I think. We share that view, and that's what we're going to do about you know about the football side for this summer. In terms of celebrations, great night last night. Obviously, great to have the moment with the staff here today as well. Are there any further extravagant uh, plans for celebrations? No, not really. Um, that, that's about it. I think it we're was, done. I think we're yeah. done. We got asked a lot about. Um, I'd like to say this actually. Dean and I uh, should make this clear. A few people today have said to me, "Oh, why wasn't there a, a big parade?" And, and even our and even our you know. Friends at the local council have been concerned that anyone might think it was their call. Uh, it was not. Dean and I talked about it for under 10 seconds about a week ago, and we both had an identical reaction, which is, we're Aston Villa. We, we have parades when we win cups, when we win leagues, not when we get promoted effectively third. And so we've had a wonderful day and a wonderful 23 hours of celebrations but parades are when, for when we win something. Really yeah, big. I mean, I, I've been an Aston Villa fan, as everybody knows, and I've, I was fortunate to get on the bus when they carried that European Cup around. And, you know, there's been a European Cup and a, a league championship, which is now the Premier League, so to speak. But yeah, for the playoff final, no. We're back where we should be. And, you know, we've got to make sure that... We go from here, yeah? Yeah, we go from here now. And going back, take it from the top, back... In October, Christian, you said to me yesterday you were always quite confident we could pull it off this season. Dean, did you feel like that at the time? Yeah, no, I believed with the squad that we had and uh, the first few training sessions really impressed me with the, with the players um, and where you could take them. Um, you know, I, I believed that we could be a top two uh, team and a club and I think we should be. Um, unfortunately, we've had things that have gone against us but other clubs will say the same but when your star player like Jack Grealish is out and you know, we lost Axel Twanzebe, who's been, you know, yeah. linchpin at the back. James Chester had played 120 consecutive games and then, you know, struggled with knee injuries and had to play through the pain for us. And all them things affected us and, you know, affected uh, us winning because we had a really good run in November, you know, when we won five out of six games, I think it was, and we was, you know, pushing up the table. But unfortunately, you know, with them injuries, it slowed us down a little bit. And Christian, that night, you had the interview with Dean. What made him the right <coughs> man again at that time? Well, that seems a long time ago now, but the answer is, um, I have said, and I'll say it again, Dean, Dean, Dean was the outstanding candidate. Every single attribute that the owners and I had talked about, uh, Dean had. And, um, and I, I really think it's important to say this, that it's all very well. Some people interview well, you know, 
but um, Dean's not that sort of guy. Dean is what you see is what you get. Everything we talked about in that long night back in October um, is, is he practices what he preaches. And so he does passionately believe that you play every game of football to try to win. Um, you know, you start with that intent and you keep that intent. Um, that was really important to us. You know, we wanted it to be a really exciting place to watch football. And the fans have spoken because we've just had the highest number of sellouts in recent times. And for over 20 years, more full attendances at this great ground. Um, you know, despite the fact last year we went, we went to the playoffs, we went to the playoff final. This year our attendances were, were double digit percentages ahead of last year. Our retail store was up 70% on the premium. All the things that show fans engaging with the team um, have been there all season. And by the way, in January and February when we had a tough patch on the field, the tendencies were growing and everything else. So, so I think fans really got behind the idea that we're exciting to watch with a manager who really understands what this club is all about. And they were, they were key ingredients for me. Christian mentions that tough period in January. What was key in the turnaround that led to eventually the historic day yesterday? I think key was the recruitment. Um, it was very important that we, we got defensive reinforcements and you know that was you know not just myself and Christian but Suso as well is very instrumental in that. Um, getting Toro Mings, Courtney House, they were really important players for us. We had to get them match fit as well, so I think people will see um, <coughs> one of my lowest points was probably Wigan away when we, when we got beat 3-0 and didn't turn up at all and made a decision to make a triple substitution and I got picked up by J JT after that game because I was, I was very low, um, you know, because Courtney went on and was finding his feet and, but then grew into, into, into the team, uh, mm. got his match fitness. Great as did, partnership with Ty. Yeah, that as did Tyrone. So that, that recruitment period, I, I believe, was, was the key for us. Yeah, it was not, I, I think you're right. And I don't think it perhaps got the attention it deserved. You know, we really, we really, Dean really significantly reduced mid-season. The starting, the average age of the starting 11 changed quite dramatically between autumn and, and um, spring. And that, and that defensive transformation, a lot of people could talk about the 10 wins you know, we've scored goals all year, and in that 10-win sequence, we scored, I think, 27 goals, but critically, we let in five. Whereas up until Christmas, we were letting in, you know, well yeah. over a goal a game. So our goal difference went from five to 21 in that period. I think, I think and, and, you know, that's a good segue to yesterday, because actually, yesterday when the chips were down, we had a 2-0 lead, and they threw everything at us in terms of, I think they probably had four recognised forwards on for the last 15 minutes. It was the defence that, you know, that won us that game. Yeah. yeah. And for yourself, Christian, we were 14th at one point. Whilst you always hoped that we would eventually get to the Premier League, what was it like balancing that with preparing for perhaps another season in the Championship? Well, two things. The first, if you ask anybody in the club, they will tell you that my mantra was we prepare, we prepare for where we are and we consider and we Every decision we make in the club, um, all our planning, all our financial decision making, everything was for the status quo. And you view, um, you view promotion as analogous to a lottery win. It's, it's a surprise, you know, and if it happens, then you, you quickly readjust your plans. But we were not gonna bet this football club again on something that ultimately with one freak refereeing decision or bad injury or who knows what, could be taken away. So we, we, we planned for that. Um, we also, we used to every week move, we used to analyse, you know, uh, our residual points to, to achieve our objectives. And we got to the point where we needed 10 wins and a draw out of 12 to reach the level that were on average got you a playoff place. And then literally we looked at that stat one Monday and, and Dean and the boys won 10 in a row. So, um, you know, that will tell you that there were moments when it was statistically really unlikely. Mm. Um, but we, when we got momentum going, the reverse was true. By the time we got to the end of that run, I sort of felt we'd be unstoppable, actually, in the playoffs. And uh, that proved to be true. So many great moments across the season, as well as yesterday. Do you have a favourite? Jack Grealish's second goal at Rotherham. <coughs> That's mine, too. Yeah. No. You like that performance, didn't you? Big chips were down, half-time, a man down. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me that Rotherham were one of the relegated teams and 
unfancy teams. They were tough to play against at, at their stadium. And to go a man down and a goal down at half time to turn it round as, as we did, I think gave everybody the belief that we could go and do this. I'm with you 100%. That was, that was the hardest moment of the season. Half time there, their fans were so up, their board were thrilled. Star player and Mings has come off and a penalty and a goal. Um, and I think we scored two by the 51st minute. Mm. And their owner said to me after the game, he said, literally, he said, you should have won that game 5-1. We didn't touch the ball in the second half and you had 10 men. Yeah, incredible performance. So how do we break down the summer now from both of your <coughs> perspectives in terms of moving forward, recruitment, things like that pre-season? Well, I'll, I'll need a break. I can't have one yet because my daughter's doing a GCSE, so I won't be going away just yet. So we can get some planning done over the, the next week or two now. Um, but I'll definitely need to go away for a few days and, and get a break, as everybody will. Um, you know, it's a marathon of a season. Um, we've already been planning pre-season. That's been ongoing for the last three or four months. So we've got games in place. We've obviously got the tour to um, Minneapolis over in America as well. So. Um, all our planning's going really well so far and uh, you know, we'll probably get a few more calls uh, off teams that will want to play us now with a Premier League team. And Christian, what is the approach in terms of player recruitment over the summer? Well, we have a, we have a I think, um, I think, I hope Dean would agree, you know, we've got a, a very well organised um, uh, recruitment department now under Suso's leadership, some really great young recruiters and highly experienced scouts have joined our club in the last six months. They've been working meticulously. Dean and I have been seeing those materials now for many weeks. And so, as I just said, we move now from the hypothetical situation of Premier League or Championship. We're in the Premier League. We have those plans in place. We now dust them off, have a bit of time, pause, reflect, and then, and then move. We, 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 we will be inundated with both um, you know, suggestions and media speculation. Uh, that won't impact us one iota. We, we know what we want to do and we'll do it thoughtfully and carefully in the coming weeks when, uh, when we've had a bit of a break. And what do you feel is needed from, from both your point of view in terms of squad changes? Because obviously a lot go back on loan, there's a lot of players out of contract. Yeah, I mean, we've got options on three of the players, haven't we, um, who are on loan. Uh, the other players will go back to their parent clubs and, and go back with our thanks because we don't own them. Um, you know, uh, they've all done really well for us. Uh, we've also got players who are out of contract who I'll sit down with and have a chat with me, myself and Suso uh, with them. Um, you know, but we've always, as I said, it's a plan doesn't just come about because you've got promoted. Um, the plan's been ongoing for the last three, four, five months. That's really, I think that's really important. We, we it's kind of difficult to put it into words, but, but. Football is, a, football is a season long thing and really well run clubs plan in advance and then at this moment look back over the whole season mm. top to bottom and look at individual players top to bottom and, that, and then you make decisions that not based on a euphoric moment but are based on a body of work that your coach and your, and your sporting director have looked at and studied and analysed and that's the kind of work that's going on now and that then informs Next, next season, and I think we've got, we've had, um, you know, we have momentum, and we have a, we have a, a core of players that we're very excited about. But obviously, there will be comings and goings, and um, our goal is to make sure that when we arrive in the Premier League, we're ready with a Dean Smith team, with players that Dean, that fit his playing profile, and um, and that give us the best possible chance of making a real impact next season, and not just making up the numbers. There's no. There's no interest in, in uh, flirting with the catastrophe of, of relegation that the club has had to live with for the last three years. So we need to make really good decisions and add players who really improve us. Yeah, kind of leads into my next question really. Still very much the, the outlook is to get young, hungry players through the, through the door here. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. But, but also get good people as well, good characters, good personalities. Because we've seen what that can do, you know, we've brought in the likes of Courtney Howes and Tyro Mings, uh, Tom, Tom Carroll came in when he was here. They all embraced what we were about. Really good personalities who fitted in straight away with, you know, the, the team and the club. And we should definitely add, because it predates both of us, John McGinn. Yeah. You know, that's a model signing for Aston Villa. Age, 
hunger and the most important word of the lot, which is which is quality. Yeah. Um, you know, he is a he is an incredibly influential figure around the team because he exudes positivity. He loves playing for our football club, and so that rubs off on other players. If we could find players of that ilk, age, profile, quality, character, that's the perfect Aston Villa signing. And we we both said it recently. You know, we thank Steve Bruce for that because he left us an absolute gem in that football as a signing. The other players we've talked about, some of them aren't our players and we don't like that as a model going forward. We no. want our own players. Dean's improved players this year who we don't own. They're now much more valuable when they, when, when they joined us and other clubs are gonna benefit from that. And if we try to buy them, they're almost gonna say, you improve them and now pay more for them. Well, that's a terrible business model. Mm. We're not gonna be doing that in the future. You can, you can that's on the record. Is it too early to set yourself a target for a Premier League season? Do we do we already have, you know, a top half finish in mind? Anything like that that we'd like to aim for? Well, we'll try to finish first. That's what you always try to do. Um, you know, I think any any time you start the season, if you're going and telling your supporters that, oh yeah, we'll try and finish 12th, yeah, it doesn't wash with me. Um, you try and win all to get every game you're playing. 100%. Christian, can you talk to us a little bit about the, the US tour, the pre-season, why there and the benefits that's going to have for the club? Well, I'm absolutely certain the one thing that, uh, that our friends at, uh, in Minnesota will be absolutely thrilled with the result yesterday. It will obviously be now, um, you know, they, they showed faith in us, in hosting us uh, as a team that might or might not have been a Premier League club. We now are. Um, and um, no, we, we have a very large number of expat <coughs> supporters in North America and we have uh, a commercial program at the football club today where we want to attract more uh, international brands to support this great institution. And so putting a footprint in America where we give those consumers that follow us from afar but would like to see us live, we've done some fantastic packages for, to connect fans all over North America into Minnesota for the game be around us, watch us train, stay in our hotel and, and watch, us, watch us play. So I think that will be great at the fan level and then at the business level, obviously this great brand needs to be on the map globally, not just locally and domestically. And so um, I'm really looking forward to being working with some major brands and who want to work with Aston Villa and everything it stands for. Fixture release day, just a couple of weeks away. Who would you like first in? I'm not sure. I thought about that. <laughs> yeah, not really thought about it. Um, maybe Manchester United away. Only because I had a nice text off Alex Ferguson saying I could pop in and have a nice glass of wine with him after. So. <laughs> yeah. That and yourself, Christian, a lot of friends, obviously, in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Re I'm. It will be amazing to go. Uh, to go. To go back to uh, Anfield and Stamford Bridge with this club that I now um, love. As a coach, Dean, what are you looking forward to the most about being in the Premier League? Well, pitting my wits against you know some of the best coaches in the world because it's such a global league that it has to have some of the best coaches in the world working in it. Um, you know, it gives me the oppo opportunity to test myself. I think we're all trying to do that to get better. Um, you know, and it will certainly test me and, and my coaching staff. So, uh, looking forward to it because there'll be some challenges ahead. And just to finish, is it worth reiterating that this is very much Chapter one, the first step in a long journey for Aston Villa. Yeah, I think, I think um, well, it's the, f it's, the, it's the biggest and most important step. So it's not any old chapter. It's a, it is a vital first step because essentially we've got back on the right platform. Uh, and from there, then Dean and his team, their talents can you know, be given full vent on the right stage um, because the support that Dean and I have now from tremendous owners in terms of their interest, their qualifications, their knowledge and of course the financial resources means that on that platform we can take this club on a wonderful journey um, and I think we will. Do you feel that from the dugout Dean, that the sky is very much the limit? Yeah it could be yeah, because you know this is the first promotion this club's had since Graham Taylor was first manager here in 89, is it something like that? You know, which is a long time of the top, that's because the, the club has been in the, the top flight for all of them years apart from the last three where we got relegated into the championship and we feel that this club should be a Premier League club. We are now, so you know, we want to go and challenge in there. So both of you, congratulations on a, a great season, well done. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.